So this is gonna be my third and final video from the FSD ride I did the other day with Tesla. And this one is a bit important because this is the only part of the three parts where we actually had to intervene at one point. It was not a dramatic or a dangerous situation at all. As you see in the clip, the car ended up at a dead end in a construction area zone where it couldn't find its way out. So we had to hit the reverse and, you know, back out for it and then let it drive the way all the way back. Check it out for yourself and see what you think. And before diving into the video, I'm just going to leave you with one note because from my own anecdotal experience, my girlfriend has just been pregnant. Now we have a little kid. It's amazing. But her being thankfully temporarily disabled and handicapped by this, she has experienced, we have experienced how problematic it can be to not be able to get, get around when you're in that situation. And, and that made me think about the broader implication and I just looked it up. There's more than a billion people right now on earth that's disabled or handicapped or, you know, have a poor eyesight or too old to drive themselves. And all these people will, will be, it's not just about convenience, it's about liberating them and letting them have back their, give, give back their freedom to them. Because now they can, with this technology, when it rolls out worldwide, they can actually move around just as they wish uh, at a, an affordable and in a safe uh, way. So I think it's very important. Keep that in mind. Check out the video. I'm looking forward to posting more stuff on Tesla FSD and the whole Elon Musk empire. There's a lot of shit going on right now and I can't keep up. So it's, uh, it's amazing. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Starting again. Starting Your, Joachim is uh, allowed to press the button. Going back to the... Yeah, back to the dealership now. And we are, because this is a dead end road, so we are just gonna see if we can make the car do a U-turn um, or if we have, maybe we have to take over. But I also feel like it's worth noting that um, Daniel's ping tips, his video, it wasn't like because there was any like dangerous situation. No. It was just to, because the car was a bit hesitant, he, he, hesitant yeah. and, and like waited for stuff. It was not like it was about to run over a family or anything like that. It is very safe. It, it maybe just sometimes need a little bit of a nudge to get going if it's stuck or something. Which I think is pretty important to underscore that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When when we say intervention, that can just be Sounds to press the. I mean, it can be to press the accelerator mm -hmm. to yeah. make the car go. I mean, that can be an intervention. Okay, actually, so this is a really tight spot. It's gonna end up. In no, but it actually tells us to go left. The sign tells us to go left. This is putting FSD to the test. Oh my God. And we are in the harbor, so we hope we're not gonna run off. This is actually. <laughs> Pretty interesting. Yeah, we are. We are. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but to the left there's water. So, <laughs> so. We <laughs> Hold on tight. And now we also have water ahead. So that's the uh, and that's a big, a very big puddle right there. Take it easy. Take it easy. No, it's so good. Interesting. It's just so weird, actually, that you don't really know what's gonna happen. Don't really know what it's going to be. Can I just say... Well, let's just leave... Let's just leave it away. Sometimes Can I just say that if this was a normal taxi ride, I would be a bit worried at this, oh, this point. Is this, is, uh, this is uh, the problem yeah. with Uber back in the day. I think we have to give it some slack. Because this is really... Where, where, where is this guy taking us? <laughs> oh my god. I, I think... Okay, so... It's, it's, it's one gigantic construction zone we ended up in. So must Human, <laughs> maybe it will back up and find its way out, or I don't know. <laughs> we. Okay, so that was the first intervention, the car got lost in a construction zone. So now we are backing up and turning the car around. It's quite a tight 
part of town. That's for sure. And I think it's worth saying that this could have been prevented if we have had turned the car around and then started the navigation. Because then the car could have just made its way out. I would have gotten lost there as well. I think you would have you would have turned around and then just yeah. gone out the same way you came back in. True. <laughs> There's a guy. <laughs> You almost like, like get an emotional connection to the car. It feels like it, it's a little bit. Uh, well, let's see it again. There are no answers. Give the camera a wink. What did you say? I just said that uh, it's it's amazing how quickly you get kind of an emotional connection to the car. You feel a little bit uh, like sad on its. Uh, yeah. Kind of had hope that it would have done it better just for the, its own sake. But, uh, let's see what it does. We are out here. Harder? Yeah, but I, f I feel like that with my own car. Sometimes yeah. if my car does something good, I will just uh, uh, very uh, gently stroke the steering wheel <laughs> or maybe clap the steering wheel and Slowly. be like, good job, Tesla. I, I do that a couple of times per day. I feel like just like people have a relationship with their um, uh, ro uh, uh, robotic vacuum cleaners, I have also yeah. have a relationship with my car. It's a good car. And it hasn't even begun talking to us yet. No. I saw that there was like a holiday update uh, where you can have croc. Yeah. Uh, I think it's in the States also, right? Yeah. Oh my god. That's gonna really change things when it's <coughs> when it has croc full integration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, and you can have what is her what is her name? Ellie? No, what is her name? Annie? Yeah. Uh, Annie. Annie. You can have Annie. Annie, Annie. Annie. Annie talk to her. Yeah. You can be like, Good morning, Annie, and Annie yeah. can be like, Good morning, where do you wanna go today? So this is where we should have turned around, but now we are going back out again. Yeah, you're gonna develop kind of a relationship, have a relationship with the car quite quickly, I think. It's gonna remember all your experiences and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you also get aroused when you put in the charging? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, it is electric. It is like an electrical feeling, right? Yeah. Spark. What is it called? Sparks in the air. Yeah. No. But we didn't get uh, sexually assaulted in the back alley. We just turned around <laughs> and uh, now we are making our way back to Kyrgyz. I saw a video of the of a Waymo picking up a woman in, in LA where there was a, a, a guy in the trunk. He just... No. He was just uh, lying there waiting for the next customer. Oh my God. I wouldn't have had him sit. I don't know. But... Um, so far, I would say quite impressed, of course. It would have been optimal if it didn't have to <coughs> intervene at the, at the end of the road, but... But I mean, just, just if you just see it as like, okay, will this technology software, will that make your life more easy and convenient and safe? Yes. But every once in a while, if you get stuck in a construction zone that is a dead end, okay, you might have to take mm. over and turn the car around, but that's not a big deal. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a problem. Mm. Okay, here there's a funny thing. This is Danish, and that red arrow means that we have to give way, but okay, it's just following this car, which I mean, it's not bad. I think I would have done the same, and maybe they also have a give way sign here. I don't know. And they could test. Okay. Oh, yeah. And the uh, Tesla employee just told That's me, quite, uh, just told me that the other car blinked at us, and and that is a signal that it wants us to go. So, uh, so the car actually did a very human-like thing and just followed the directions from the other people in traffic. That's also another thing that, when we again, if we, if we compare to the lighter approach of Waymo and others. Yeah, that wouldn't have. That wouldn't have been possible because no. this this system is actually intelligent. It's taking in the visual data from the cameras mm -hmm. and analyzing it the same way as a human does. It, it, it understands uh, understand hand gestures. Hand gestures so if, if people in traffic wave you like to go along, it understands that it needs to move along because people are saying that they are not moving right now, mm. which is pretty crazy. There's also these videos, have you seen these videos where it like waits for ducks and geese and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, it's holding back as well. Yeah, it's super nice. So now we have a big roundabout here again. And yeah, it's just, it feels so human-like. 
Okay, I would say one thing that it does wrong here, I think I would do the same, but that is it continues all the way out into the middle of the bicycle, yeah. the bicycle lane. So if a bike would come... Uh, it was actually a bike who turned. Yeah, that turned, but we would have been in the way of that bike if Unless that bike didn't turn. That bike was turning. No, it didn't, because it also did it before, yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah. So that's like a minor, but that is also something a human would do, like as a mistake yeah. from time to time. It would have been interesting to see if the bike didn't turn, if it had like been backing. Or yeah, I don't think so. But it's, it's just, it's just, so, I think, I think if people see this for the first time, they will be like, okay, what's the deal? The car is driving itself. But what we have been following this journey online, seeing people do beta testing in the States. And it's just, it's just like with the chat GPT and Grok and all of these models, it's crazy how fast they get mm. better. So, and what you are seeing now is the worst version you will ever see of this system. Yeah. And it is, and it is. I would say flawless, but it will never get worse than what it is today. It will just exponentially become better every single day from now on. Yeah. So, it, it, but it's just, it's almost like you take it for granted, almost like you take ChatGPT for granted. <coughs> now you just, you just go there and ask it whatever you want and you get a response. It's just like, you get used to these technologies so quickly. Way quicker than people they think. Yeah. And that's also, one thing that people have been saying is that I mean, Tesla should be partnering up with Uber because people really like the Uber app and it's hard to make an app and, and stuff like that. But Tesla has made their own app and it's one of the most downloaded transportation apps uh, on all the app stores in around the world. And I think earlier this week or maybe last week they um, they made it public to everyone in Australia and they're just slowly yeah. like testing the interface and like how it's working and people are using it to take paid rides in America right now as, a, as we speak. And uh, another thing on that note that people they don't recognize is that as soon as they are ready for you know global launch and global scale, they at, at some point they're gonna most likely integrate the robo taxi functionality in the app within the X platform. So it's gonna be a menu within X. As uh, the old Twitter X. Yeah, the old yeah, Twitter yeah, X, yeah. which uh, has around six six hundred uh, something million. Users will ah, okay. So instantly, there's going to be six. And you can pay via X and, and you can pay via, yeah. via, via the app. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So I don't know how many Uber users there are, but I don't think there's more than six hundred. No, and you also have everyone owning a Tesla. Like I think the Tesla yeah. app, you could probably also order a robo taxi from the Tesla yeah. app, right? I mean, yeah. and I, and I mean, so that's that's six million people, eight million people. Mm -hmm. Next year, maybe eleven million people. Yeah. That's, that's I was saying 600 with X. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> pretty crazy. I don't have an X account. And then, as well as the standalone app, of course. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, the car is just doing its thing. It's just uh, there's a runner on the side here. The car sees him, but there's no problem. So we just continue. It's keeping the speed limit. Perfect. Alignment. Perfect. Perfect. So it just it yeah. feels. I feel like I'm being driven by a very uh, professional uh, chauffeur. Such a delight. I can't wait to can't wait to do like proper road trips in this. <laughs> we talked about imagine if you had like a, a van, a camper yeah. van, and then you, you decide you want to go to uh, we live in uh, Denmark. Let's say you want to go to Italy, so you can just go sleep in your car and you wake up in in in, yeah. in, in the Dolomites and you can go for a, a hike. It's just a, it's yeah. so crazy. You can you can lay in the back and watch a movie, and then you can cook some dinner, and go to sleep while the car is driving you to Italy or Switzerland or Austria or something like that. It's, it's not if it's when. It's so insane. So here we can see again how much it sees. It sees the big truck over there. It sees all the different cars. It just has a really nice bird eye view of mm. everything. And it's a pretty, pretty big traffic like this one. But my best guess is that it will just handle it. Now it turned green on the arrow, but this car didn't move because it understands that that is not a green light for mm. us. Which, when you think about it, is actually uh, my car, uh, even when I don't have any systems turns on, quite often mistake this green arrow as a light that I can go. So, so it makes like a 
ding, you can go now because it, oh, yeah, it misinterprets um, that it's a green light for me. But this system is worth saying that the enhanced autopilot software we, I have in my car is not the same software as this software. And I think sometimes yeah. people don't understand that. This is not a better autopilot. You know what I mean? It's a whole other technology. It's, it's a whole other technology. It's a whole other system. Yeah. Perfect. As soon as it turns green, it just goes. And and also feel like it's accelerating nicely here. It's like it's yeah, not yeah. slow. It's like it's actually what is it called? Like, like confident. It's firm. Yeah, yeah, it's firm. It's like it goes like a human would go. Not too fast. Not too slow. But just like nice, confident acceleration. Five minutes until what? Okay, Joachim, we have five minutes left. Okay. What is your first impression of riding in a, a Tesla FSD? This could have been a robo taxi ride. Would you have been a satisfied customer if this was a robo taxi ride? Except the the intervention at the end of the road. Yeah. Mean, I guess they could have potentially, if there's been a robo taxi, they could have. You know, totally operated the last yeah. <coughs> intervention yeah. until they have it like completely um, intervention free. But what's your first uh, impression? Overall, I'm, I am, I am super impressed. I think it's, it's, it's still, it still boggles my mind that it's even possible. Yeah. And it's, it just feels so real. It feels so. It's, it, it is hard to put, put words. On because it, it almost feels like this is how it's always been. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel new. Feels it feels like okay now we're just now we're just in cars that can drive themselves. Okay, that shift has been made. That problem is solved. Yeah, it's, it's it sounds like a negative thing, but it's it's surprisingly underwhelming. You could say yeah. because it's just so smooth. It feels normal. It feels like this is how it has always been. I mean, I'm I'm actually surprised. I I thought I thought that we would have more small intervention. I didn't think that we would be like close to running anybody over or like doing something very dangerous. But I thought that you know maybe a quick lane change, maybe hit the accelerator brake, just small things just to keep the car going. But I mean, we we haven't had anything except for when we decided to test out if the car could do a U turn. That that's the only thing. Mm no jerkiness and stuff like that, no. which you are used to, you know, with... with if if I had this software in my car, this software that we're using today, I'm pretty confident it could ride, it could take me all the way from my work at the airport, all the way to my address and park in my neighborhood. Yeah. And I could just get out of the car and I would have, you know, I would have been able to relax for those 45 minutes instead of navigating Copenhagen rush hour traffic. Yeah. I'm pretty confident that the software could do that now. And then, okay, of course, maybe once in a while something happens and I have to take over. But that is like, I, I mean, I, that's that's still worth it in a way. Yeah, for sure. I, I think there is uh, two million Teslas in um, Europe right now, yeah. and the software is around ten thousand dollars. So imagine if five percent of those cars uh, adopted. FSD once it gets available to the public. Mm. That's a pretty big number. It's like one billion dollars. I heard Daniel uh, from the other video make this example. So that's like one billion dollar in pure software revenue. So this is also interesting. Very human-like. Goes around the big truck. It notices that it's just stopped. We have some people yeah. walking here. It's very dark. You cannot, you almost cannot see them, but the car has seen them. And this is a very big bump slows down it knows the bump and now we are back at tesla in Kerr and we will we will end the video here maybe we'll see if it parks so crazy that he ha hasn't touched the steering wheel or the pedals once perfect and we stopped the recording. <laughs>